The Saqqara Necropolis, situated on the western outskirts of Cairo, is a fascinating site of many tombs and monuments dominated by the famous Step Pyramid of Djoser. Today, we will be looking at a uniquely special example of the Pyramid of Unas. Built in the period between 2345 and 2315 BCE by the 5th dynasty pharaoh, it is both the smallest and the last of the Old Kingdom pyramids, but its uniqueness lies in what is inside it. It is the first pyramid to contain hieroglyphics, the complete funerary text of the Book of the Dead. The Book of the Dead is essentially a collection of 283 magic spells that are meant to guide the spirit of the deceased ruler on his journey through the afterlife ensuring his success in becoming an eternal star in the firmament. The pyramid can be reached by walking down a long causeway that originally linked it to a sacred lake to the east, which is now vanished. This causeway is notable as the best preserved structure of its type in Egypt, and although most of the enclosure is missing, the flagging and the retaining walls are in a remarkably good state of preservation. The superstructures of several tombs and mastabas that laid in its path were destroyed during its construction and the materials gained were used for the causeway. It was roofed along its entire length with a narrow slit in the ceiling blocks providing illumination to the cool interior. The ceiling blocks inner surfaces were covered with carved stars. Some materials for the pyramid were also poached from Djoser's mortuary complex. The causeway ends at a pair of granite monoliths on the east side of the pyramid that once fronted the mortuary temple, and the entrance to the burial chambers is, as usual, on the north face with the mouth of the descending passage being slightly below ground level. All of the chambers are carved from the bedrock beneath the pyramid. Of the mortuary temple and the entrance chapel, there are now merely traces, and the complex was already in ruins only 300 years after its construction, when Ramses II had it restored, which is an odd circumstance when compared to the quality of construction of the pyramids on the Giza Plateau, which are several centuries older. I left the causeway as I approached the pyramid to examine some granite blocks nearby and measure their cove cuts, then check the gap and angle on some limestone casing stones near the entrance to the descending passage. The portion of the pyramid above ground is essentially destroyed, and only a few casing blocks remain in an extremely weathered and eroded state, but the fit between them remains extremely close and well aligned. The angle of the casing stones measured varied slightly between 56 and 58 degrees, most likely due to the extreme weathering. Entering the descending shaft, we crawled down to the crypt level about 47 feet long and at an angle of 22 degrees. Once past the portcullis stones and into the high gabled antechamber to the tomb, we were greeted by the pyramid texts covering all the walls and passages with stars carved into the massive ceiling blocks. The hieroglyphs are in high relief and beautifully rendered, seeming as fresh as if created only yesterday. The sarcophagus chamber to the west is small and the coffer is placed against the far wall. On the eastern side of the antechamber are three storage rooms. When the pyramid was first entered, in 1881 by Gaston Maspero, the remains of a mummy were found in the sarcophagus, but the rest of the pyramid's interior was bare. Having paid our respects to the memory of Unis, we climbed back out of the descending passage to resume our exploration of the necropolis.